Boys, 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 what's happening? Uh, this is going to be a video about Saintly a little bit. And I had agreed long ago uh, about her skill canceling and uh, a guide for that. Well, and I said that the next time that she was on Banner, we do it. So here we are. Um, this is going to be about um, a form of her called Gunner Expat, in which case she skill cancels and does a ton, ton of regular attack damage really, really fast. Um, if you've seen any of my videos with her in the past, it's probably her spamming her regular attack. And this video right here is to explain all that um, and to give you guys some insight into how to do it, um, how to build her, how to support her to get some max damage out of her. So uh, why don't we get into it? Um, so the first thing I want to go over is, you know, what is skill canceling? Uh, <laughs> I wrote a definition. Don't know if it feels correct, but here it is. Uh, the process of canceling a skill that is already set in motion with a regular attack. So as you know, a lot of times maybe you guys have played the game and have hit a skill and your, your units busy running to the enemy in order to proc it. Well, if your unit has a ranged regular attack, you press the regular attack button, the big, the big red attack button in the middle, um, you can actually send an attack off and basically nullify the, the skill being used. So in order to skill cancel, we're going to take advantage of that mechanic um, and to cycle through between skill use and regular attack use. All right, boys. So I need to be brutally honest here. Um, first question that I think we need to answer is, what kind of device do you need to be able to do this? Unfortunately, the game is just super unoptimized on Android. Um, so having zero, essentially zero lag is almost impossible. Now, some of the newer Android devices, yes, you can probably do it on. I've heard they're not bad, it just it's not perfect. On Steam, it doesn't have any hotkey support and you need multiple inputs at once, like multiple fingers at once, essentially for like a tablet or an iPhone or something like that. Steam doesn't have any hotkey support. So not really possible there at the moment. And what you really, really need unfortunately is an apple device uh i personally for this use an ipad air that i bought in 2021 um and i can do this on my iphone 12 that i have but in general apple devices are way way more optimized but now on to skill canceling uh what do you need to be able to skill cancel you need two things you need the unit that you're using to have a regular attack that can be instantly activated sure and bonus points and, and almost for all situations you'll need it to be ranged and non line of sight which means You'll have to be activated from anywhere on the map, attack the enemy, as well as ha have them not have to run in order to activate, right? So people like Shift a little bit, people like Zlorg, people like Roy V, um, Sage Sage Emperor Zekis that all have the ability to uh, instantly throw out a regular attack. That's what they that's what they use. Um, and then two, a skill that forces them to move in order to activate it from the position they're currently located. So I say this because. You need to be able to have to stop the, the skill from activating and you can use your regular attack and have that attack go off. So for units like Sage Emperor Zekis, his S2 forces him to get close to the enemy. But if you stop that with a regular attack queen, his S2, before his S2 gets there, he'll actually fire off a regular attack and the S2 will be canceled. Such as Roy with his S1, V with his S1 as well. And then, you know, another example, Arity is a little bit different. She has a melee attack, but you can actually use her S2 up close forces her to jump backwards and instead use that to regular attack. But for Gunner Expert specifically, why she works so well is that her regular attack can be instantly activated, is non-line of sight and range, which checks all those boxes. S1 also forces her to be horizontally aligned with the enemy, which means if she's far away, you know, vertically from the enemy, it will force her to run north to get activated. Now her S1 can be activated from any range, but she needs to be activated in line of sight first. Um, and that's what we're the mechanic is formed, right? She needs to run in order to activate it. So it's extremely advantageous for her, but not only that, her regular attack completes almost instantly. So the cycle between skill canceling or canceling the skill and activating the regular attack, activating the the next skill and, and activating the regular attack is incredibly short, um, shorter than any other unit we have in the game. For that reason, this is why she can fire off so much damage at once. Now, here's the thing. Uh, obviously, she needs to be out of line of sight of enemies uh, in order to even activate her regular attack and skill cancel. So what kind of enemies is this advantageous against? Well, they have to be stationary because uh, enemies that run around the map and, you know, move a lot are not going to be able to, she's just not going to be able to focus on and you're not going to be able to get consistent damage down and the rhythm on for the skill canceling itself. Um, so luckily, many of our bosses on the end game are stationary generally. Um, you can run to a part of the screen where they're they're not going to follow you and you can do this kind of thing so i think that's you no know, 
Is it useful in all content? Absolutely not. Is it useful in a lot of the harder content that we have and be able to use this method? Absolutely. So how do you do this with her? That's that's the main question. How how for shift a little bit, and this is why I'm making the guide, is how do how do we skill cancel with her and how do we do the max amount of damage? Well, she actually works differently than a bit of other units. Um, so for ones that I mentioned, such as like say Jeff Rezekis, Roy V, all those ones you generally time well to, you know, hit the S1 and then and then chronologically hit the regular attack to cancel it. Well, her cycle stuff is, as I mentioned before, is so, so fast, her activation of regular attack, that you do want to press both the S1 and the regular attack at the very same time. Why is that? Um, it will, I don't want to say it will confuse the system, the, the LC battle system, but it essentially puts them so tight together that you'll be able to um, activate it and activate your S1 again and again and again. But in the middle of that, your regular attacks will be firing off. Um, and I'll try to show that, you know, as we go through, but you'll see what I mean once you actually get her into play and start doing this. I want you to keep in mind, do not try to alternate your fingers pressing those buttons. You need to hit them at the very same time. That is absolutely the most important thing. Do not try to alternate. Your best results will be from hitting them at the same time. So as a personal example, I do use my middle finger and my ring finger on my right hand to do skill canceling with her. I feel like that gives me a pretty consistent output. Um, I put my palm on the table and, you know, stabilize it to just concentrate on hitting the base base fingertips on those skills, the S1 and the regular attack. Um, do you need to go as fast as humanly possible? No, no, you don't. Um, you can go, <laughs> yes, fast, and you need to keep the combo up, but you really, it's, it's, I don't want to say it's relaxing because it, it, it's not that relaxing, but it's not like you're, you're focusing on only tapping as fast as you possibly can. Now, will it get better results if you can do that more consistently and fast, the faster you get? Yeah, absolutely. But I feel like if you try way too hard, you're probably going to drop the combo way more. Um, and it's just a general tap. It's a very, very gentle up and down maneuver hitting the very base of your fingertips. And that's it. All right, boys, I just want to give you a little bit of insight as to what's happening in the video on the right. Um, these are my steps for success. These are my steps for, you know, being able to consistently skill cancel with her. All right. So like we talked about before, she needs to be out of range of her S1. So you generally want to move vertically, but her S1 is not in range to start the skill canceling combo. Once you are in that range, you're going to be tapping S1 and attack at the very same time, like we mentioned. Expect, of course, there is time in between her running towards the boss, and that's just going to consist of her gradually making her way down towards the line of sight where S1 can be activated. Now, here's an interesting thing with her. If you continually keep up the combo and keep the rhythm going down, um, you can actually keep skill canceling even though she really, really, really wants to use her S1. Why is that? Is because there's a very small activation frame between hitting the S1 and doing another regular attack. Um, she needs a certain amount of time in order to even activate the S1 again. Now, the reason this doesn't work, you know, just being in the S1 range in the first place is because if you start out by pressing the S1 and she is in range, she just won't regular attack cancel at all or skill cancel at all. So you need to start the combo outside of the S1 range. Um, and her gradually going down towards and maybe stopping and she basically looks like she stopped and is gunning from a specific spot. That's when you know you just got to keep up the combo. If you break it by her, you know, break the rhythm and maybe she sends off an S1, you know that you have to reposition to get out of frame of the S1, start the combo again, and then you continue going. Um, it's a little bit of, you know, trial and error. Make sure you guys practice it. Um, and honestly, you'll get the hang of it as you go. But my step five is profit because this is the beauty of it. Uh, you have infinite amounts to try. You can practice this on your own. The best place to do this is going to be where I'm at showing this video. And that's going to be the high speed mode quest in the Sky Fortress Solaris in the Mordana continent. Um, definitely go here and practice. Uh, this is, you know, you can very easily, especially if you're following my steps and following what I see on screen, and maybe you can like visualize it yourself uh, just as to where she's going to where to place her, where to start finding where, how to skill cancel, finding your rhythm, your combo. Um, so definitely do go do that. So you might be asking me, hey, you know, how do we build her? The same as a normal physical DPS? Well, no. One of the best features and why this is such a potent method 
is that regular attacks take on the damage attribute of the weapons you equip to the unit. So yeah, shift a little bit or say a little bit or expat is going to be an ice unit mainly for her, you know, skills and her special and stuff. But she's actually not in this case. She's more of a blank slate because we're just going to be using for her regular tech damage only. She essentially can equip any equipment, any weapons and become that attribute of a damager. You know, ipso facto, be all attributes or non-attribute, whatever you choose. Keeping that in mind, it basically opens up the doors to so much content and so much, you know, uh, attribute advantage content that you don't even know probably at this moment. Um, in the future, even with further content that we're getting, this is going to be an absurd method to use because she's essentially buildable for all week. Now, maybe you've seen in the past uh, videos of myself or others using her in Guild Hunt, which obviously uses different attribute weaknesses every week. Um, yeah, you can bring her in there and basically equip her with different items, different equipment, and have her be a top DPS for every single one of those if you use this type of skill canceling method. So there are some questions that I want you to ask yourself when you're thinking about using her and, and thinking about bringing out her max damage, right? Is the enemy stationary? Essentially, you'd be using her in situations where the boss would be on part of the map and stationary. Um, and having them being able to sit in one spot while you move around and being forced to run into her position for her S1 and be able to skill cancel is very, very important. Um, what's the enemy type? Are you going to be needing to add a killer to your kit? Um, that's really huge for boosting her damage. Of course, as we know, the anti-typing effects are huge. Slayers and killers. Now for this, since you're not using skills, you're actually just going to be having to use a, a, a killer instead of a slayer, which is pretty dope. Um, then you're going to be thinking about what are the what attributes are they weak to? Can you take make this into your advantage in order to use weapons that you have into absolutely massacring them and getting the massive boost that you can. Now I will say, maybe not always you'll have to use weak stuff, especially if they're like lightly weak to it. She does get a good bit of boost from ice damage in, in her kit, so you can use those more often than not. But in general, you'll be wanting to build with equipment for you know that actually advantage. Can you easily apply ailments? Um, ailments are some of the biggest multipliers for damage in this game, as well as disabling or debilitating the enemy. Um, in a lot of situations, uh, you can slap on Terra Mouse 1, 2, 3 onto her. Any There's also accessories that boost against certain ailments or even all ailments. You can also use debil debilitating stuff such as Blind, especially the heavy ones like Blind, Silence, Curse, and Stun, especially Stun, to just basically make some battle absolutely easy as heck. And that's just another thing to think about. Now, one of the main damage boosters in her kit that I think you can definitely utilize very easily is can I easily attack her back? That's a question you need to ask yourself. Either by running to it and or flipping them around. Now, a couple different scenarios you can use in a lore tank. Let's say you're using Chris, Gorm Crystallia, Shift Gorm, have a bunch of her lore stacks on him, have some armor with a lore, have a lore, have the girl's party, and have the boss only focus him. And you can get surprise attack, backstab damage. Um, some absolutely massive multipliers while you're trying to do skill cancel. Not only that, if you stun an enemy and they're st completely stunned, completely immobilized, you can just, in if you can run to their back and use this method, it's kind of crazy. Now, just for reference, uh, what do you want to be building towards damage modifiers with her? Uh, physical and regular attack damage, yes, of course. Physical, regular attack damage is kind of looped into the physical attack damage overall spectrum. And, you know, to do that, you'll be wanting for her, she scales with strength ups on her regular attack and skills, so strength ups are good. You know, the, the, the attack ups, the pride, the, um, you know, the grand braves, all that good stuff. Um, relevant weapon boosts are great because she's going to want, you know, she has machines that she equip innately in bows. And you're going to be wanting, you know, machine high boost maybe. Or if you equip other weapons, you know, sword, sword boost, sword high boost, axe boost, axe high boost, stuff like that. Um, all damage modifiers are really nice. Like, like we talked about, surprise attack is an all damage modifier that's 50% for like 4 SE. If you attack an enemy's back, the Terror Melts are all fantastic multipliers. Combo Masters 1 and 2, which I know Combo Master 2 says it's only physical damage, but it actually is all damage. So at any point you're above 50 hits, in, 50 hits on the hit counter, you're gaining that massive, massive. Then we get into attribute damage. Attribute drives, which affect both physical and special. Of course, you don't need the physical. Attack raises, which would help in that certain, maybe not use those because they're not that efficient. 
for damage potential for her, but attack raises do work. Then you're looking at physical weak point boosters, which is one of the main boosters for her. Um, getting that physical damage boost for 30% for 7 SC if you're fighting in a weak element or weak attribute. And now we're looking at, you know, maybe you're capping. All right, that's great. Capping is fantastic, but what do we do on top of that? And why is she so cracked? Well, you have the ability to build her, yes, like as like we mentioned with all those boosts, but also to add impacts. Now, one of the things that we have hated in the game forever for physical DPS in general, because most of them use their skills, are impacts, pursuits. Impact, double impact, and triple impact are all examples of things that only activate on regular time. Well, they're damage procs. They're not, they're not actual physical hits to the enemy. They're only damage procs that add to the hit counter. So, you know, if you're hitting for a 20k and you have a dumb, double um, impact hit for 20%, that's another 4,000 damage on top of her already damage. Um, you can stack impact, double impact, and triple impact to an absolutely devastating effect to enemies if you're consistently hitting that, tapping your damage in general. Also, I want to mention pulley system from the... Uh, Dr. Stone collab, so that's another option to give more pursuits. I mean, it's not that effective, but it is something. Also, what we've gotten recently is extra attack boost, which is a passive that gives us 10% more damage on our extra attacks, which are considered impacts, double impacts, triple impacts. Various equipments and accessories also give pursuits or extra attacks on their or on chance or or automatically upon a regular attack, which is kind of crazy. There's many, many weapons that give pursuits, or like we call them pursuits or extra attacks on their hits. And we're regular attacking, which is nuts. It gives massive, massive damage. And then we look at arcs. There are three very distinct arcs in the game that I would put into this category right here. Number one, SSR Icy Guardian. For every physical critical attack, it hits for an ice extra attack that's essentially about 50% of the damage you had done on that on that hit um it does since it's ice it does scale with the enemy ice attribute resists so if it's weak to ice it will be more than 50 percent damage if it's resistant to ice it will be less than that 50 percent which is kind of cracked because you want she is a bow user in general she gets she wants to be using crit rates and bows and all that good stuff this is huge for her also the ssr heaven's bow star lord this is an arc that gives a 25% non-attribute pursuit extra attack after every single critical hit. It also boosts your critical hit if you're using bows, and it's just absolutely cracked when using a massive crit build. While you are already, even if you're, you don't need the crits to cap your damage. You want the crits to be on top of your damage. You want to be capping your white damage, and then for every crit on top of there, you get massive pursuit damage, which burns her, her hits and her hit counter gets jacked up to hundreds if not thousands in a row if you consistently can skill cancel and the third one i'm going to mention there is the ssr saint morius this is one that i've used consistently against light weak enemies light weak bosses um this gives a guaranteed percentage pursuit um on every single regular attack which is huge this stuff is massive but now that we have all that now what well you need to support her one of the best things about her being this nutty is that you can make it even nuttier to do this, you'll need other units to help. You want other units' passives to boost her damage, as spells to help her do damage, and to take care of what needs to be done in order to bring her to her max. But what stuff do you use? Many units have ways to increase the physical damage of her innately. Like, for example, Tinkili's physical damage boost that she gives at battle start. There's also Gen who gives a physical damage boost at battle start. There's also Sarah's ultimate that gives attribute damage, and maybe she gives Grand Brave, which she's a great enabler for her. You could also drop the relevant attribute resists, you know, weak attribute circles like, uh, you know, for her, if you're using ice circle, you throw on thunder circle and cast it or flame circle and cast it. It makes her specific attribute damage that you're building for more effective. You could also drop the defense of the enemies because she does scale off of strength and she wants to hit the enemy's defenses as low as they possibly can. You know, drains, the high drains, the super bad chemicals make her hit even harder also drop the enemy's ailment resists with a null melt make proccing ailments for her or her uh, the other units even easier to further enable her damage and maybe debilitate the enemy completely and then you're looking at maybe other units that give alternate buffs and for one example is the sabers the ice flame thunder saber all that good stuff from the prim and duran from the trials of mana collab 
that's something that maybe you have not, maybe you have in your account and you haven't used in forever. But those saber buffs are absolutely massive extra attack damaging things that can be put onto her to give massive damage, especially if the enemy is weak to that specific saber attribute. All right, boys. So the first spot I want to bring her into is going to be against an ice weak boss in Lord Martigate. This boss does only have like 5 million health, so it's going to be over before the blink, before you pretty much blink. Um, <laughs> but I'll explain the build a little bit. So I do have 102 SC. Yes, uh, I know you could cut that down by quite a bit, but I just figured I'd use what I had. The main points of this build is using Dragon Killer and Special Boost. Give us a massive, uh, massive physical attack boost against the boss. Corrosion Fang to give us 20% uh, free physical attack boost. Um, physical weak point boost. Since we're going to be using two ice weapons and the boss is weak to ice, uh, we're using poison research to enable terror muff one and two, as well as the accessory guard prayer ring. Impact, double impact, and triple impact to get a ton of uh, pursuits and extra attacks. Extra attack boost to boost those even further. Machine high boost for obvious reasons. Combo master one and two because we're going to be doing a ton of hits and get above 50 very easily, so that's a constant boost. Then time to kick some ass. Then we're using the Yule Fest Ice Bazooka, which is her paid, so it's Ice Machine. The Frigid Yule Fest Bow, which is an Ice Bow. And then Dark Mirror Ring and Granite Area's Cryer Band for more damage. We're also using the Icy Guardian Arc, though, so therefore for every crit, we're going to get a massive Ice Pursuit or Ice Extra Attack. And that's going to be it. Uh, we're going to try to skill cancel and nuke this boss as fast as possible. So, enjoy. Alright boys, this is going to be our second battle. Um, this one's going to include some limited stuff because I just feel like <laughs> I want to bring... I just want to show you guys a battle where she just absolutely dominates. Cheeses, she dominates, whatever. Um, yes, it is 102 SC. Uh, I'm using all that I have to give. And it's just to show you guys just how ridiculous it is. So I'm using uh, strength ups because the boss will have some high defense at the end. Um, special boost because it's against a fish. We're going to fight the Kraken. Um, and she has Brute Slayer innately, so it's, this amplifies it. Hammer Equip to put on Cactus Hammer. I'll hammer, have Hammer Equip innate. And that's going to be our main uh, purpose in this is stunning and then hitting from the back. Um, Rose Fang to give us a free boost of 20% damage. Uh, Pride for more 20% strength. Prize Attack and Backstep, like I mentioned before. We're going to be hitting him from the back. We're going to be stunning him. Then he's going to be immobilized. And we'll just smash, smash him from the back. Uh, Terror Mouth, Terror Mouth 2, because those are huge damage boosts. And we're going to be stunning. Piercing, because at the end, maybe again, my, might not proc his uh, buff flipping. So we're going to have to do some damage. And then double impact and triple impact. Mostly not the OG impact, because one, I didn't have enough SE to put it. And two, it's a chance. Double impact and triple impact are 100% going to happen. They are all it's basically three extra pursuits right there of 20% uh, damage on the Every single regular attack, which is sweet. Extra attack boost to raise them all by 10%. Machine high boost because I am using machine and getting a special there. Skill charge one is almost a guarantee for all of these builds, um, like you saw probably in the first one. Um, that is going to give us that uh, S1 stocks in order to even begin uh, skill canceling. Home Master 1 and 2 gets a massive damage on 50 plus hits, which you're going to see we get up into the many thousands of hits on this. And then time to kick some ass is going to give us 20% uh, physical attack damage for the first 40 seconds. Now, arc we're using melee mare. Uh, this is because it gives us yes 4,000 damage kept on enemies with ailments, but also it gives us another a massive 40% damage boost whenever we're at critical or at hit count 100 or more. Um, and that's just going to be you know easy caps for us. Weapons and, and accessories we're using bolt cannon Ganoderis. Uh This is a thunder machine, so this is going to get. Uh, Thunder damage is going to essentially be super strong here because the boss is weak to thunder. Um, it also gives us some piercing. Like I mentioned, piercing in the previous part is the boss is going to have massive defense at the end. We're going to try to get past that. It again, cannot proc his stuff. Uh, Cactus Hammer to do the stunning. Dark Mare Ring to give us massive boost to strength and uh, status ailment damage. Admin Relic is 
there because it gives us a small chance to proc uh, more pursuits on more extra attacks on uh, regular attack hits, which is sweet. And then our spells. This is Gen and Duran are our accessory units, our support units. Uh, we're going to be dropping the resist with extremely bad chemical and ice circle, dropping the defense with high drain, um, dropping the anulum, using anulum up to drop the ailment resist of the boss to so that we can stun. And then Thunder Saber is going to be applied to uh, Expat from print from Duran, and then he's going to give us massive, massive thunder damage on every single regular attack. So, yeah, this is going to do quite a bit of damage, and you'll see in a second. But why don't we go through it and show it? So, uh, in general, uh, again, and again, and Duran are there just because again flips buffs at the end there to give us. Easy kill at the end, and then Duran is there for our lore tank and then Saber. Well, I did specifically put Duran as the third spot, so we would flip on the other, you would spawn on the other side of Kraken. He holds a lot of our lore stacks, so Kraken's gonna face him. And as we're facing him, we're gonna go back here and stun the shit out of him. Um, and this is going to be the formation for the rest of the battle. <laughs> Just continually stunning. Do just a disgusting amount of damage. We're skill canceling. We're not letting the rhythm of the combo drop. And he's already at half health. We hit the HP lock. And we continue to attack. Even though we're not doing damage, we continue to attack to make sure he continues to be stunned. That's one of the most important things. Keep him immobilized. I'm going to reiterate. It may look like I'm hitting them alternating between the S1 and the attack. I'm not. I'm hitting them at the exact same time. It's just the... Um, frames and whatever are showing them that you know alternate not dropping the combo one bit let's see if we can kill before the annual melt runs out and we just about did 9600 hits includes all the regular attacks all the pursuits all the I guess I just say extra attacks, the impacts, everything. 9,600. You killed in how much? One minute and seven seconds. Now you can see how ridiculous this is, right? <laughs> All right, boys, that's basically going to do it for the showcases in the video. Um, more so, I just am creating homework for you to go practice this if you can, if you have an, uh, an iOS device to do so. Um, if you do have her to just go have fun with it, use her as a blank slate, work with her as you see fit. Um, you can use her for many battles from any attributes to non attributes, boosting her, non boosting her, whatever you want to do, use some cool arcs um, and just see what you could do with it. Like it's she's one of the most versatile and fun units in the game, in my opinion. Um, and I just feel like, you know, maybe this guide helped you see the potential of her. This is why she has an ideal rating of so high on the tier list, because this is the stuff she can do. She can be a debilitator, an enabler, a massive nuke, uh, single target damage, as well as a nice wave clearer in general for her actual kit. So um, I hope you guys did enjoy her. And I just wanted to clear up before we before we leave um, one thing before, you know, maybe calm your, calm your, calm your concerns about is this going to get fixed, right? So that's the main question of, is this a bug? Is this intended? That whole re rhetoric that happens. Um, here's the thing. Last year, early last year, they quote unquote fixed her. Uh, they patched her timing, the timing of her doing her um, attack spam. They patched that early, early last year. Like I think it was January, February. And she came out in December. And this is what had resulted from after that. They had not touched it since. I made up uh, how many? I can't even fathom how many videos I've made with her doing this same thing in it. Um, and of course, you guys can go check all those videos on my channel. Um, I don't see it getting fixed anytime soon. Now, making a full ass guide like this, I probably bring some more attention to it and maybe you would have them relook. I hope that's not the case. And I really feel like they don't need to touch this, but it has been quote unquote patched and fixed early, early in 2022. So. Um, if you do pull for her or if you have pulled for her and gotten her, enjoy it. Um, it should last for quite a while, I would assume, if not forever. So, yep, 
have some fun with it. Um, go play in Guild Hunt. Go take her into Maze. Go take her into the world bosses. Go to, I mean, she doesn't really work in multiplayer because of lag on even on any device, but you know, take her into the hardest battles, take her into do single target damage and just have some fun with it. Um, go practice, giving you guys homework, go practice. But she's an awesome unit and uh, she has this little niche that's super, super powerful. And I just hope you guys enjoy it. So I'll uh, see you guys in the next one.